Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I'm John, and as always, thank you so much for being here. Good topic today. We're going back to the well, so let's get right after it. What's the creepiest experience you've ever had while you were alone? Part two. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. First house, Ben, my now ex-husband and I were slowly renovating room by room. Parents always keen, aka nosy about what we decided to do and would always visit once I was willing to show the room off. Dad was especially nosy. He would go through your mail just to see what was there. No harm was meant and he never gossiped. I was at home and my ex-husband was working a late shift. My dad had died a few months earlier and never got to see the bathroom and laundry renovation we had done. I was sitting watching TV. From where I was, I could see into the hall and the bathroom and laundry doorways. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw something move. I watched a large dark gray see-through cloud move. It wafted through the top of the closed laundry door, pause, and then moved down to about waist height and go into the bathroom. I guess dad really wanted to check up on the reno. I was about 11 years old, was startled awake for no discernible reason, just woke up feeling very on edge with a racing heart. I know this sounds nuts, but I looked over near my doorway and saw an actual alien standing there. It was the stereotypical tall, slim, gray alien with huge dark eyes. Naturally, my entire body froze in fear and I stared right at it for what probably was only 5 seconds, but it felt like eternity. I knew I wanted out of the room, but to leave I would have to run past the alien, which I did. I went into my mom's bed. I remember a blindingly bright light was streaming in through her window blinds, but I was too scared to look out and see what it was. The window faced towards our backyard, so it couldn't have been car headlights. Eventually I fell asleep and woke up in my mom's bed, so at the very least I know I did change locations in the night. Definitely the creepiest thing that's happened to me, alone or otherwise. I was at the kitchen that night. All lights were on except the ones from the outside. I was getting some water when I heard someone saying my name. I look at my left, the place from where the voice was coming from, and only saw the windowed backyard door. I wasn't scared at all. I thought that it was just my imagination. Then I heard this voice calling my name, again. Worst of it is that the thing said my second name too. Something that not everyone knows. Now I was scared. I was shocked and silent and the voice started laughing, laughing like if he was making fun of me. I ran upstairs and stayed in my room. I wasn't home alone, but I was in my room alone. It was midnight. I was in high school just sitting up reading. I was really into my book when I heard a weird sound from across the room, coming from my bookshelf. I looked up and saw that a book had indeed moved. At first I couldn't believe it. I got up and walked over and saw that just one book had moved so it was exactly halfway off my bookshelf. I stifled a scream and dived under the covers, crying and shaking from sheer terror until I fell asleep. Now, I try my best to debunk these things, but I couldn't find a good explanation. The bookshelf is perpendicular to my door, so I would have seen it like that when I walked in, and my books were all flush then. I'm an only child, so no one was playing any type of prank. I googled it the next day, and there wasn't any earthquake. I tried testing if the bookshelf had shifted or if the book was loose, but it actually took some amount of force to take it out and put it back into its place, and the bookshelf hadn't seemed disturbed otherwise. This isn't the first unexplainable thing that happened to me in that house, but certainly the most pronounced. So when I was a kid about 12, my baby brother was born. So one night, he was still a newborn, he was crying in his crib and my parents asked me to hold him while they go make him some formula. He slept in my parents' room, and the room was pretty dark, the only light being the one in my mom's walk-in closet. I sat there with my baby brother in my arms, and then I felt an uneasy feeling. I looked up at his crib, and on his crib, he had a thin veil to keep bugs out and stuff. So I looked up at the crib and watched as my whole body went cold. A black-cloaked figure leaned over my brother's crib and gently lifted the veil as if it was looking in. I watched that veil be lifted and held into place as clear as day as I was frozen with fear. Once my parents came back, the veil dropped and I handed my brother to my parents and then checked to see if the windows were open or if any fans were on. Nope, no wind whatsoever. Yeah, that's pretty freaky. Uh, did you tell your parents about it? Seems pretty wild. Hopefully your little brother's okay. 
When I was younger, I developed this sudden interest in true crime stuff, so I was always watching Criminal Minds and Law and & Order and things like that. This was really cool and I loved it, but it started to make me paranoid and I would always freak out at night. I would lay in my bed thinking, what if a serial killer broke into the house right now and just stare at my door waiting for someone to walk through? So one night I was laying in bed, terrified as usual, and just as I'm about to fall asleep, I hear a click and see my door open. My breathing stopped, and I had never been so scared before that moment. Immediately I'm thinking, wow, okay, I'm going to die, and waited to see who was standing behind my door. The door creaked open as slow as possible and opened all the way, revealing nothing. There was nothing there. I didn't even have the courage to get up and close my door, so I went to sleep thinking the house was haunted and that Casper was going to kill me in my sleep. I told my mom about it the next day, and she said that the door opened if you didn't close it hard enough. It's funny looking back, but on that day, I almost had a heart attack, and I'm glad we moved out of there. One of many, but probably had the most effect on me, lived in a rented house as a student with three other people. We were checking out some cupboards at the top of the stairs, and we found a load of love letters and personal stuff, had a laugh at the old-fashioned flirting, moved on with life. Other housemates go home for Christmas. I stick around for a couple of days due to my job, starts with just general feeling of being watched, tingle in the back of the neck, unheard whispers. Early evening, I'm in my room, reading a book, and my TV just turns itself on. Not even to a channel, just static. Okay, it's getting on a bit. Could just be a fault. Turn it off and carry on. My girlfriend told me once she could hear footsteps on the stairs at night. I didn't think much of it. Multiple resident students without a sensible body clock between us until I hear them. I know I'm there alone. I shut my bedroom door put the TV on for noise and leave the light on. I'm taking no chances. That is, until I wake up having managed to finally fall asleep and things definitely aren't okay. I can't scream. The door is open and I'm hanging half off the bed, my arm stretched toward the door and the darkness beyond it. I finally gain control, grab my keys and run to my car to spend the rest of the night. Next day I pack a few sets of clothes and don't return to that house on my own again. I've never felt relief like the day I moved out for the summer, knowing I was moving into a different house the next year. Driving in LA, when I was 21 years old, stopped at a stop sign and before I knew what was happening, a man opened the door and got into my car. He looked angry and was huge. It was broad daylight, but I was a smallish young woman and absolutely terrified. He said, I need a ride. And for about 20 minutes, I drove him where he directed. He'd tell me to turn here, I'd turn. He said nothing else, but kept muttering under his breath and staring at me. I kept looking for a place to stop where I could jump out of the car. Then he said, this will be fine, pull over. Got out of the car, then before he shut the door, he leaned back in and said, be careful. Wife and I moved to upstate New York years back and eventually purchased a home of our own. We are not in the sticks, but there is plenty of woods and farmland around, much more than we were accustomed to. One night, about a week after we moved in, I was enjoying the peaceful night on my back patio, having a smoke and heard a terrifying scream, followed by several others, all coming from behind my back fence, and it's only woods out there. I waited a few more minutes and the screams became more panicked and were multiplying, like it was several girls yelling for their lives. I booked it after I heard the leaves rustling beyond my chain link fence and went inside, looked up, horrifying animal sounds or similar to ease my worries that a group of girls were possibly being murdered near my home, and one of the first videos made it clear. Coyotes. Lots of them. And they are horrifying. My uncle and dad stayed at this really creepy cabin in the middle of nowhere for a while. The uncomfortable tale is that there was a big tree outside. An elderly couple owned the house and the wife loves the tree. The day she died, the tree died. The stories they experienced that they swear by is that there was an upper loft with no railing. If they sat on the edge, something would push them off. Everyone was downstairs and in view of the person up top and it still worked. They did it several times for fun. I don't remember if it was the same cabin or a different one, but my dad was sleeping in the kitchen because there weren't enough beds. They were broke hippies, pretty fresh out of college. My uncle slept in a small room with a bed upstairs. He randomly woke up in the middle of the night and saw a figure with pointed ears looking over him. He pulled the cover over his head and hid until morning. In my childhood bedroom, I had a little chandelier on the ceiling with individually battery-powered candles. 
I rarely turned it on because it was a hassle, but one morning in high school I woke up and one of the candles was on. I thought maybe my mom or my sister had snuck into my room to prank me or something, but I'm a really light sleeper so it seemed unlikely. I turned it off and went on with my day. The next night, I went to bed with them all off and in the morning a different one was on. At that point, I was convinced it was my sister, so I let a few days pass and didn't bring it up. One morning, two were on. I turned them off. The next morning, none. And the next morning, it's a different one. I finally got angry and stormed into my sister's room early in the morning. I told her she can't come in my room anymore at all because her sneaking into my room was keeping me up, and I told her I knew the whole time. It was a total bluff. I was just really hoping it was her. She was shocked. She swore she had never snuck into my room and had no idea what I was talking about. That night, I decided to stay up and watch. Just as I started getting drowsy, maybe 2 a.m., I saw a candle turn on. Nothing moved. The chandelier didn't swing or anything, it just flickered on. About 20 minutes later, I watched it turn off. Then two different candles came on. One of those flickered, hour, and so on. It freaked me the hell out, but I watched it go on silently all night. The next morning, I left the candle on that was still lit. I checked all the others that they were off, and I just left that one. When I came home, it was off. Over the next few months, it didn't happen as often, and never during the day, but now and then, one or two candles would keep going. Let me set the scene for you. 4 a.m., November, in northern Minnesota. It's about uh, 10 degrees Fahrenheit outside, and windy. I'm about a mile from the trailer I stay in while deer hunting, and about another mile from my stand for that day. We're on a large property with three other people. No neighbors this time of year within five miles of our property, and the nearest town is 20 miles down the freeway. A few flakes of snow cut through the moonlight that guides my trail. Total silence, it's near deafening. Now, that sounds creepy and peaceful at once, like some relaxing isolation from the world. I agree, it's truly peaceful and so beautiful. I've been hunting this property for three years now, and my family has been for the past 100 years. The white-tailed deer here are plentiful, and the wildlife is so fantastic. I've seen wolves many times, but they don't scare me. They mostly leave people alone. As I've been walking for the past 20 minutes or so along a thin trail in the southern end of my property, I hear a noise that makes every hair in my neck stand up. It's hard to describe, like a woman screaming and an animal howling mixed together. It pierced through the silent night, like a knife through the air. I cannot describe it, but it was terrifying. I know it was a puma, as they had been seen in the area before, but it felt genuinely supernatural, and the fear I felt was immeasurable. I understand how stories of wendigos and other cryptids have continued throughout the years. There's something so primal about it. Hearing a noise like that, it's forever etched into my mind. It reminded me that I wasn't that all-powerful being in those woods, and I should follow the rules of the forest. That primal fear, that primal gut instinct to leave an area, super important, and when you feel it, it's time to go, so good job. I live in a small town. Everyone pretty much knows each other, so it's relatively safe. About two years ago, I used to walk myself down to the middle of the town and get breakfast at a small cafe early in the morning and then make my way to school. I had been doing this enough that I was comfortable with it. I was relatively young at the time, probably 13, but one time it was rather cold out, so I decided to take a shortcut through an area I wasn't very familiar with. I was about one block away from the cafe when I noticed a man, presumably homeless by the way he looked, and out at 6.30 a.m. by the liquor store. There was a good 20 feet separating us, and I could tell he was watching me, which made me uncomfortable. I got closer and closer, which was a bad idea. I should have turned around the second I noticed him watching me. You can already see where this is going. He ran towards me, full speed. I turned around and booked it to an empty parking lot not too far away while screaming at the top of my lungs for help. I remember thinking it was like a game of manhunt. He could have come out from any corner. I sat alone in the parking lot of the store, and luckily within a few minutes, someone was pulling in for their morning shift. I explained to him what just happened, and called my mom. Needless to say, that was the last time I went out of my own in the mornings. This story might not compare to some of the other stories in this thread, but damn, this was petrifying for me at the time. It's 10 p.m. I just got home from work. The kids are with grandma, so I have the apartment to myself for once. 
After being home for a while, I finally settled in the living room ready to continue my Simpsons binge when I started hearing what sounded like someone messing around in my kid's room. Specifically, there was a knocking that was like someone was messing with the closet doors. It was that moment when I realized I never locked the front door when I got home. Now, the area I live in isn't crazy bad, but it's not that great either. So naturally, I grab a steak knife and use all my knowledge I've gained from cop shows to clear the place. No one was there, but I still heard the knocking. Turned out it was the water heater, and my stoned ass couldn't tell the difference. Thankfully, it turned out fine, but the thought of someone in my home, let alone my kid's room, freaked me the F out. Could be that strain that you were imbibing could be a little bit more of a head high than a body high, and then you get that little bit of paranoia, and then everything's magnified. Not that I have any experience whatsoever, but, you know, good hybrid always works. I was hunting out in the mountains of Idaho between Mackey and Arco on September 2nd of 2019, two miles up past Creek to be more specific. I was two miles up the canyon and about a mile up this hillside hunting black bear approximately 75 to 100 yards from a supposed bear den that my uncle had shown me two days prior. That morning, my relatives and family had packed up and left, leaving me alone. I rode another uncle's four-wheeler up to the other side of the canyon after they left. I went up to the supposed bear den about four in the afternoon and parked the four-wheeler about 150 to 200 yards down the hill to hide my presence to any animals I may be able to shoot. Once in position, I'd been sitting there for about 30 to 45 minutes before I began to feel like I needed to get the hell off that mountain. Not strong, but definitely unnerving. I brushed it off and continued to sit in wait of my prey. As I sat there, I heard noises in every direction. Nothing unnatural, but definitely that something was there. Behind me, I'd hear what sounded like something creeping through the dry grass, followed shortly after by like a twig breaking in the opposite direction. Then off to my right, I'd hear what I thought to be the grunt of a bear. Nonetheless, sounds of something came from all around me. Nothing to create alarm, but as time went on, the feeling of needing to get off that mountain got worse until about 6.30pm when I finally said F it. $12 for a bear or mountain lion hunting tag was not worth my life. Considering if things went bad, I had to get the 150 to 200 yards to the four-wheeler, then the mile down the mountain to my truck, then drive two miles out of the canyon to phone service before I could phone for help. I noped the hell out of there and hurried to the four-wheeler while constantly looking over my shoulder, still with the same feeling in my stomach. After getting back to my truck, the feeling disappeared, leaving me nervous and shaky from the experience. That night I camped at the mouth of the canyon, not wanting to be near that area. That night I slept in my truck due to the wind and fear of what was potentially on the mountain with me. At one point I stepped out of my truck to take a piss and heard some sort of unnatural growl causing me to jump back in and lock my doors while shining a flashlight everywhere. Possibly it was just my nerves and tree branches rubbing due to the wind that night, but I wasn't taking any chances. I never saw what caused that horrible feeling that afternoon, but I've learned to trust my gut when it comes to bad feelings and get the hell out of the area. I'm torn as to what was on that mountain with me, but the other part says it's best to remain in the dark. It still haunts me months later, and I'm still worried while out. The mountains and woods, I know that both weapons I was carrying could easily take down any dangerous game I would encounter, but I still felt helpless. For context, my rifle was a Savage 111 chambered in 300 Winchester Magnum, big round, and my sidearm was a Glock 40 and 10 millimeter auto, which is popular among Alaskan big game guides for bear defense and well known to stop a charging grizzly. If anyone has any idea as to what could have been on the mountain, it'd be nice to get an idea.